All right, welcome back. In today's video, we're going to be looking at how to use the symbolic toolbox in Octave. So what we're going to take is this dynamics problem of this jet powered boat starting from rest and we're giving a velocity versus time graph and we're going to use the symbolic toolbox where we can take the derivative into integral and figure out how to find displacement and acceleration and create those graphs. So let's first take that graph and we're going to cut it up into two sections. Section one is the red from zero to 25 and section two is 25 to 50. So we have our velocities V1 and we have our velocities V2. So first let me go through the math and then I'll show you how to program it and make sure the answers are correct. Let's go over here. All right, section one. This is our velocity that we just had. 4.8 times 10 to the minus three times t cubed. Section two, V2 is negative three t plus 150. The easiest thing to find is the acceleration because we know by definition, acceleration is dv dt. So for section one, we're gonna take the derivative of this. <clears throat> section two will also take the derivative. So let me scroll down some. So if we take the derivative of this velocity, we just multiply by three, bring it up front. Okay, so it's three times 4.8 times 10 to the minus three, and then we subtract one, so t to the two. Over here, we have negative three t plus 150. The derivative of this is just negative three. So the acceleration is constant, which if I go back to the graph, if you have a linear line like this, acceleration is gonna be constant, okay? So we found the acceleration. Now, how do we find displacement? Well, we have to use, let me scroll up a little, right there. The fundamental equation for velocity, which is V equals ds dt. And I just split them up into each sections. Okay. So let's look at section one first. So all I did was multiply V1 by DT1, and then we have DS1 right here. So we need to integrate, okay, the velocity from our initial time to T1, and then integrate this from initial position to S1. So we're going to plug in, scroll down here. We're going to plug in our velocity equation, and we're going to plug in our initial time, which is zero, and then we're going to leave this as a variable because we want to make an equation. Over here, I already did the integral because the integral of 1 ds is just, you just take as s1 minus the initial, okay? Initial displacement is zero, so we just put that to zero. And then we're going to integrate this side. So let me scroll down. So when we integrate, we keep the constant in front. 4.8 times 10 to the minus 3. We add 1 to the exponent, and then we divide by that. Okay? And we're going to evaluate from 0 to t1. And we plug in 0 here. It, it Like, you're going to plug in this variable into here, subtract 0, but it's just 0. So S1, your position equation is this right here. Okay, 4.8 times 10 to the minus 3 divided by 4 times T1 to the 4. And it's only valid from 0 to 25 seconds. So now what we got to do is we got, we got to <coughs> integrate our V2 equation from initial time to T2 
final time or initial time for S0 to, to S2. Okay. Now I'm going to be, you notice I plug in numbers at the bottom of the integral, but I leave these because I, that's how you make an equation. So let me scroll up, scoot over a little. So we have now 25 seconds is the initial time evaluated to T2. Here's our velocity in section two. And then I integrated this again because it's just one here. So it's just the top integral minus the bottom. And it's S2 minus S1 end. Okay. So let's keep going. So we integrate this negative 3t squared over 2 plus 150t. Okay. Evaluated from 25 and then t2. And then I just kept this on the right side of the equation. Keep going. Let me zoom out some. Okay. So the way to do this is this t2 is going to go right into the equation here. So you got negative 3 halves t squared plus 150t. And let me finish that. Let me put twos here. Sorry. <clears throat> so that variable is going to go in there. Then you're going to subtract this whole thing, but you're going to plug in 25 seconds. So you get negative 3 halves, 25 squared, plus 150 times 25 equals S2 minus S1 end. <clears throat> so I plug this number in and I got 2812.5. These I just bring down. So you get negative 3 halves T2 squared plus 150 T2 minus 2812.5 equals s2 and then I put in the s1 equation which is your s1 equation just at 25 seconds okay so let me scroll up so let me keep going here so two two so here's our equation negative three halves t2 squared plus 150 t2 minus 2812.5 equals S2 minus 468.75, which is this number. And I put this in here, and we're going to go back to it. But those, you're going to notice in my code that the integral, when we do it, we can integrate this side of the equation by using this equation, by saying int velocity to the your T1n, which is 25, evaluated with t2 and then over here you're going to notice that this is the integral or part of the integral or s1 end that you need to find so <clears throat> this is the final equation like on paper but you're going to notice it's slightly different in the octave because i do it slightly different okay so let me go to let me open up that Downloads. Okay, so here is the code. Let me make this a little bit bigger. There. So here we go. Main code. CLC, clear all, close all. Always, and again, headers. Make sure you know what you're doing. What you need to do in order to make in a symbolic equation you're going to be basically making an equation that has variables in it. You have to load this package. So PKG load symbolic. Then the next line is you're going to make sims T1 and T2 because those are our symbolic variables. <clears throat> Again, we're going to find displacement, velocity, acceleration, and time. Those are my basic nomenclatures. So let's go down here. V1 is 4.8 times 10 to the minus 3 times T1 cubed. That's the V1 equation. Same with V2. Initial time is 0. T1 end is 25. And T2 end is 50. So when we run this, if I type return and I run this, 
it is going to take a little bit to run this symbolic package, so just give it a second. There we go. Now, if I type in V1, it gives me an equation. Okay, so this is different than before. All right, this is a little bit more advanced. We're creating a symbolic equation. Same with V2. Okay, so let me delete that. Now, <clears throat> how do we do derivatives and integrals? Well, let's go right here. So A1, you just say diff, which is the derivative of your velocity one equation with respect to T1. Boom. Okay. Same with A2. Diff of V2 comma T2, because we're, we're going to take the derivative of this equation with respect to this variable. Now, how do we do the integrals? Well, S1 would be int. We're going to integrate that velocity equation, this one, with the initial condition of 0. And we're going to do it based on the t1 variable. Okay. If you notice, this okay, is going to be the same for S2. Okay, but we're going to integrate v2, all right, this equation, with t1 end, which is 25, with respect to t2, which is our variable. So if we go back to the one note, if you notice, this s2, my line 39, is only integrating this left side of the equation. It has not included this yet okay so be be very careful with that so let's go back and uh let me type return let's run it okay again i want to show you what the equations look like okay so here's s2 which is negative three halves t2 squared plus 150t2 minus 5625 over 2, which is exactly that equation right here. Okay? When we do the math, you get 2812.5. Cool. Cool. I'll go back here. All right? So we've taken the derivative. We've taken the integral. We do still have to add that S1 term. And we can do this this way. So now we have the equations. How do we get them so we can plot it? Well, we have to use the eval command. So t1, we're going to assign a number now, is from 0 to 25. And we're going to go by 0.1. And we're going to evaluate the s1 equation with these numbers. Okay, because s1, v1, and a1 all have t1 in it. Okay, so if I go back to the command window, if I type S1, A1, and V1, they all have T1 inside. So we're going to evaluate those equations with these numbers, and it will spit out numbers. Let's type return, we run it, <clears throat> give it a second. I notice sometimes with Octave, these don't, these kind of stay up. In order to clear that completely, you have to close it. Um, but for now, we're not. I'm not worried. So if I type S1 now, it will give me a bunch of numbers. Okay. Let me uh, clear it. Yep. Let's type. Uh, yeah, it's a little glitchy. That's okay. Let's do V1. Okay. So V1, it'll give us a bunch of numbers. Okay. And again, it's a little glitchy, but that's okay. I don't know what's happening here. We can also go to this command window. Let's do that. V1. Okay. So this gives me all these numbers. S1 will give me numbers. So that's how we evaluate those. Cool. All right. <clears throat> now, do the same thing for section 2. T2, 25 to 50. But here you're going to notice that S2, I'm going to evaluate S2, but then we're going to add the S1 end 
okay and that's the sh this sh this is the shortcut to find um, the the last value in your displacement okay which is going to be this 468 you see how I have this so we're going to add that to the other side to get s2 equation which will end up being this equation okay then we're going to evaluate v2 and a2 and now we have let me uh, let me just do it right here give it a second actually I can do it here <clears throat> let me just type C clear so now we have s2 we have v2 we have a2 okay which is negative 3 we have all of these evaluated from our symbolic equations and we can now plot and again subplots I'm plotting s1 on the top v2 and then finally a now if you notice a2 was a constant it's not going to plot very well so the way to do that is to create a matrix of ones and multiply it by a2 okay so I did ones so it's going to be a matrix of all ones length of t2 because that's what we're plotting here comma one because it's just like one row or one column depending on where you pick okay so like if i if i do this i'll show you let's run it let's get the graph <clears throat> i didn't type return okay good so here's the graph so we got displacement on the top velocity and acceleration Okay. See how we got this red horizontal line? If you didn't do this, it it would it you wouldn't get a plot there because it would say that this is one number and this is a bunch of numbers. So if I go here and I type this, see it gives me a column of ones. So we're basically multiplying a2 by that to get negative 3 so it's the same size as your t2 matrix because if you pick if you say size of t2 it's 1 by 258 okay so it's created a2 now is multiplied by 251 ones <laughs> all right so that is how you do symbolic all right create an equation you can integrate you can take derivatives and then to finally assign numbers and evaluate. Thank you and good luck.